Hi, I'm Nikki, the obsessive bookseller. Welcome to my channel. Today we're doing a big book unhaul. I'm doing things a little differently this time around. Normally I will save up a ton of books and then unhaul them all in one fell swoop, especially after pulling things from my Read, Burn, Hoard project. It was really fun to gather an entire bin before I finally did the unhaul, but I just don't have that kind of space anymore and I don't like having things taking up room in my library because right now everything is just stacked willy-nilly in front of my really nice bookshelves. I am reclaiming my space. Today I'm going to go through everything that I have set aside to be listed on Pango Books and show you all the titles that I'm letting go. Then I'll probably save this clip and then add on any other things that I let go over time until I have enough that I think it's like a significant enough video. First up, The Shattered Sea Trilogy by Joe Abercrombie. Top three favorite author for me, but I just did not enjoy this series as much as I thought I would. Now, compared to adult fantasy, this one doesn't even hold a candle. Like, I would not even recommend this to someone who doesn't like YA. For a YA book, it was just mediocre. And I read it for my A to Z project. I got through the first two books and started the third and was already thinking about how much I wanted to list it for because I knew I wasn't going to hang on to the series. I did not enjoy it enough for it to take up prime real estate on my favorite red section collection. And I'm like, what am I doing? Why am I continuing to spend an entire month on each book for that project when I'm not even going to keep the collection when I'm done with it? I'm glad I at least gave it a shot, but I feel very little regret about letting it go other than the fact that these are nice hardcovers. It does make a difference knowing that I can sell them as opposed to just donating them. I think if I was just donating them and they'd go off into the void and I wouldn't know what happened to them, I'd probably hang on to them. But I can make a buck and then turn around and buy myself more books that I actually want to read. That's a win. I'm letting go a pretty beat up copy of Road of the Patriarch by R.A. Salvatore. This is an arc that came when I was actually caught up with the series, so imagine how delighted I was to open that box up as a bookseller and be like, oh my gosh, I get to read the next Dritz book. Although this is the Cell Swords, it's not even about Dritz, but that's okay, I really like these characters too. But it came already pretty damaged, the back edge was torn, but I didn't care. But now I have a nice hardcover of this one, and I really don't need to hang on to the arc, even though it's a little bit sentimental. I have Rise of a Merchant Prince and Rage of a Demon King by Raymond E. Feist. Someone was selling these two, including Shadow of a Dark Queen, which I didn't have in any other format other than the smaller book club editions, but I had been unable to find a replacement for it. Well, I really hadn't looked that hard. But they were selling these three for 15 bucks total, so I figured I'd pay $15 to replace that Shadow of a Dark Queen one, especially considering it was the first book. So now I have extras of the next two, and I'm like, I'll just relist them. This is the second set of Rift War books. This one's got a little bit of a faded spine. And they were fantastic. Kind of a next generation continuation, but it really expands the world of Kiliwan. You've got a lot of really good nautical elements to it. You've got exploration with this other island with the different people over there and the conflicts, everything, I thought it was superb. I'm not really a fan of where the Rift War saga went eventually. Um, I had a really hard time with the last like five or six books of that entire series, but I am superbly glad that I read these and they weren't a reread one day, but I don't need two copies. The Warrior by Stephen Arian. I am hanging on to The Coward because I enjoyed that one quite a bit, but this book I DNF'd at 80% and I'm so mad. It's teal, it's beautiful, it's one of my favorite covers on my shelves, but I refuse to hang on to a book that just disappointed me so much. And the thing is, is I waited to buy it until after I had read The Coward, and so I thought, there is no way I'm not going to like the next book in the series. Yeah, boy was I wrong. I ended up letting go the Rai Kara series by Carol Berg, starting with Transformation. This is another one that's just like a three star. It was a decent read, and in any other phase of my life, I may have hung on to it and perhaps even finished it. I made it exactly halfway through the second book. But it's just a mediocre series, and I was there's a lot of things I was dissatisfied about with her writing, and I found that I really didn't care where things were going, enough to hang on to the physical copies. As it happens, I do have digital copies of these, so if I ever like get to a point where I have nothing else good to read, as if that's going to happen, and think, I really wish I knew what happened at the end of that series, then I can go back digitally. But I do not feel any compunctions about letting these go other than the fact that they're really nice little paperbacks. I let go the Black Jewel Trilogy by Anne Bishop, just decided I didn't want to read it. 
And then Tangled Webs, also by Ann Bishop. And then a paperback, Dreams Made Flesh. And then I also have a strip copy that I'm just going to recycle for the Shadow Queen. This was kind of a weird one to let go, but I tried the author's other series, and I know I've heard that, like, you really can't compare one with the other, but there are just enough things about the basic writing that annoy me. We're just not on the same brainwave, and even though a lot of people say the Black Jewel trilogy is worth reading, I know myself. I am so jaded on the author at the moment that there's no way I'm going to pick up these anytime within the next 10 years or so, so I would rather have a little bit of extra cash for more books and have the space. So these are leading. Per my A to Z, I'm also letting go everything by Shanna Abe. No, I'm not. And then I have a ton of paperbacks that I think, honestly, I already mentioned in my last book on haul, which I'm sorry if it's a repeat, but I didn't get around to listing them. And I got a little bit disorganized, so there's a chance that these have been mentioned already. So I'll do it brief. Beat up paperback copies of The Serpent War Saga by Feist. I'm swimming in hardcovers, so I definitely don't need mass market paperbacks floating around. A couple books further along in the series that I replace with hardcovers during one of my used bookstore treks. I have also replaced my Rune Lords collection by David Farland in hardcover, and so I don't need the paperbacks for those anymore. This fourth book, one of my all-time favorites, really excellent. But at the time, I hadn't read on because nothing else had been published yet. And so it's one of those series that got away from me just because I was waiting on publication. Now they're all out. Atlantris, replaced in hardcover. Space Side by Michael Meme. I have two copies of this on my shelves still, so I don't need a third one. Night or Knave by Andre Norton and Sasha Miller. This one's new, so I happen to have these in hardcover, but I ordered something on Pango Books, and a lady thought she was being nice. And she sent me a, quote, bonus paperback along with my order. And I'm like, like, the minimalist in me is really screaming at that. Like, I have enough things to manage. I didn't need one more. And to boot, it's the second book in a series. Like, what if I hadn't read this one? What was I supposed to do with this? I feel so ornery, but I, that just really annoyed me. Like, if I wanted more stuff, I would have ordered more stuff, you know? And then I have a really nice copy, unread, of Assassin's Quest by Robin Hobb. Because as you can see, I already have a hardcover. Oh my gosh, the font on this is tiny! So those are all the ones that are finally getting listed, uh, along with a bunch of random mysteries that I'm sure I mentioned in one of my other unhauls. So yeah, that's it for the moment. It will feel nice to clear out those shelves a little bit. I will let you know when I have more stuff to unhaul. I have a couple more shelves to add to the unhaul pile. I have been kind of collecting everything. So I'm going to go through and show you everything that I am letting go. Most of these are being let go as a result of my Read, Burn, Hoard project. I'll link the playlist for that in the description. But a fair bit of these are going because I replaced them with nicer copies. There are a handful of DNFs in here as well. First up, Golden Fool by Robin Hobb. This is my umpteenth time trying to get a nicer, full-sized hardcover copy. I ordered this one from Canada, I paid an astronomical fee for it, and it came and it was a book club edition. These are the bane of my library, I hate them so much. And this one's actually a beautiful copy, just the wrong size. And it would have cost me more in shipping than it would be to just keep it and try to sell it. But man, it's so annoying. I have these signed and personalized copies of the Silo series, at least the first two books by DJ McHale. And I read this one for a Project YA and just wasn't into it. Just because you love something dearly by an author like his Pendragon series does not necessarily mean everything that he writes will work for you. This one was just a little too contrived for me and I had a feeling it was going to be an entire series of like, what's really going on? And if I didn't care in the first book, I probably wasn't going to care in the next two books. So even though these are signed, I'm letting them go. My entire Pendragon collection is signed as well. So i am it's not like if I let this go, I've lost any contact with the author. But I think I'm at peace with letting those go. I have ARC editions of a more recent Dritz series. This is the one I'm actually most excited to get to. I'm 
like, I don't know, 10 books behind this, so I need to start reading again. But I've replaced these in hardcover. Um, I initially had just the arcs, but I've got the nice new hardcovers now, and I don't need to hang on to the arcs. Even though some arcs can be a little sentimental, because it's really cool to be sent them by the publisher. In this case, uh, I've got this at the bookstore I worked at. Nobody else claimed it. It was amazing. And then this one I picked up on a used bookstore track, so there's not really any sentimentality there. One of my less intelligent Pango book orders, I, The Green Rider by Christine Brit Kristen Britton. This is a book club edition, and I didn't check. It They look full-sized on Pango, what can I say? But I ordered this and thought, you know, I want to start the collection over again because I like the covers, and I think maybe I'll try the series again. But I don't know what I was thinking. It was late and I was weak because I didn't even like this book. Like a couple, I don't know, 30% of the way in and I just was thinking maybe it's not for me. But a lot of people really love the series who also love some of the other stuff that I like. So I was thinking I'd give it a try again and start collecting again. I did have the entire series at one point, but they were also in book club editions. So I let those go. Yeah, I have a real bias, but... Yeah, really bad decision to buy that. I have a good few copies of the Ali Beckstrom series by Devin Monk. Mine don't have covers, so these are going to be recycled. But for Read Burn Horde, I reread the first book and even read the second book and absolutely hated it. This is one of the worst urban fantasies I've ever read. And like I always say, there's a difference between urban fantasy and paranormal romance. Even if I considered it a paranormal romance... It's one of the worst that I've read, so I'm okay letting it go. I do love that author, though. She has some really good stuff, just not that one. In the same vein, coverless copy of The Empress by Karen Miller, first book in the Godspeaker series. I determined that if I were ever going to try this author again, that I don't need a physical crappy copy without a cover. I will just pick it up digitally, but I doubt I will ever get around to reading those. I'm letting go of the Bronze Canticle series by Tracy and Laura Hickman. This is one that I've had on the shelves for years and years and just really don't think I'll ever get around to reading. I'm really sick of looking at them as well. Like, I've done Dragonlance and I've done all of the other series except for one that he wrote with Margaret Wise. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much good. You know, like, I feel like I've explored the author's works to my satisfaction and I really don't like a lot of their newer stuff. I prefer like the classic fantasy. So letting that one go. Replacing a couple of my Sookie Stackhouse books. These are like pristine paperbacks that I bought, but now I'm getting them in hardcover. So I can let those go. The Traveler by John 12 Hawks, book one of the Fourth Realm trilogy. This is one of those in Reed Bird and Horde that even though I like the cover with the premise and everything, it's just not my cup of tea. And it's not something I think I'll read within the next five to ten years. So, letting that go. I curated my Robin Hobb collection, at least the Soldier's Son trilogy. So, I can get rid of this, like, hodgepodge, no cover, mismatched. I have an ARC edition of the second one. Which, that one is sentimental because, I mean, how often do you end up with a physical ARC of a Robin Hobb book? And then this beautiful hardcover U.S. edition that I picked up on my used bookstore trek. And I am actually kind of sad to let this one go. But the ones that I'm keeping are so beautiful that I don't even care. More pitfalls of ordering books on Pango Book where you can't really see, like, condition. These are a bit yellowed and a bit more worn. And... The Suki Stackhouse books are relatively inexpensive to collect in hardcover, so for like five bucks a piece, I'm just going to keep hunting until I find one that are in better condition. But here's a tip if you're selling books on Pango. Like, actually take multiple pictures. Like, I want, like, the spine, the naked hardcover. I, like, the more pictures you have, the more informed decision people can make when they're buying your books, and the more often they'll, they'll go with your book over someone else's. Theoretically. I'm getting rid of The Legacy of the Grid by Elizabeth Moon. Strictly because I hate the cover. <laughs> this is a two-in-one compilation prequel to The Deeds of Paxinaria. And I guess there's like a holy figure in that series and this is his story. So yeah, I, I do intend to read Pax. I'm really excited to get to that one at some point. 
but I'm finally at the age where I'm learning that just because you want to read one part of a series does not mean you have to either continue it or read all of it. So I am gonna let this one go and not be too upset about that. Oh look, more Charlene Harris that I ordered on Pango and then got and realized they were book club editions. I have books two and three of the Second Son trilogy. Uh, I've read the first one. That one is also going, but it's way up top. I haven't have to like get a ladder and pull it down. I freaking hate this series. Read it with my patrons. The first one was a book club pick, and then we decided to buddy read the second one. And I made it like, I don't know, 30% into the second book before I'm like, I just can't do this anymore. I like, I physically loathe, like every fiber of my being loathes this series. It's like the most ridiculous drama that you can think of in a fantasy setting. And not drama like Game of Thrones fun drama. Drama like like MTV and Real Housewives where it's all contrived just for entertainment purposes and I just, I, I can't. I hate these books. I may actually physically destroy them as opposed to recycling them. I have coverless copies of some of the Vlad Taltosh books I was keeping these as kind of placeholders while I was reading because I'm in the middle of this series right now, but I decided I really don't need to hang on to coverless copies of these books. If I like it well enough, then I need to hunt down the nice copies of them. But I opted for space in this regard. This series, so much fun. The, they're really short books and each book is supposedly self-contained and a full mystery, but I hate it when authors say that and like, you can read them in any order. You technically can, but it's so freaking confusing because he always references things like casually and then deliberately doesn't say anything about them. Like, oh, that's a story for another day. Meaning you do have to read other books if you want to know what the heck he's talking about. Rant over. I'm letting go the sixth book in the Corinne Solomon series by Anna Guire. The first one's called Blue Diablo, and I actually really liked that one. I'm going to have to go back and read it, but do I need to keep book six without a cover when I don't actually own any of the others? Probably not. I'm letting go His Majesty's Dragon by Naomi Novik. I bought this one because the hardcovers that I have for the series, which I love, I love the series, especially the first book, the hardcovers don't really match, and they were published, like, by the same publisher, a uh, new edition of this series, which supposedly has a dragon on the spine. It would look really cool, but it came and it was just too wimpy. Like, it's too small of a book. I was hoping for something like John Gwynn type size paperbacks where it would kind of replace the hardcovers, but no. Part of the problem is, is the first four books were released in paperback within like a couple of months of each other. I'm, I'm pretty sure all three of the first books came out at once and were on display, and then a few months after that, the fourth book came out, but only in mass market paperback. And then they later published a book club edition, an omnibus of the first three books, which is really funny because I hate book club editions, but I love that one because you can't get regular hardcovers for it. And then the rest of the series, man, they don't match at all. Nothing about them matches the spines, nothing. So... Maybe eventually, like, Broken Binding will do an addition for them. Yeah, look at this. Like, no spine continuity whatsoever. And they're even kind of, like, like, great, that one's okay. That one's basically the same cover. What the heck did that one get published for? And then we're back to, like, random, I don't know. I hate these, but I love the books. I thought they were fun. Lost in the Moment, but Found by Shanann McGuire. This is actually one of my favorites of the series. Wayward Children, so good. But I requested a copy, and then I was independently sent one by someone in the same department, but I guess they didn't, like, cross-reference. So I ended up with two, and I don't need two, but it was really cool to get two. Gods of Amaranthia, book two in the Tide Lords Quartet by Jennifer Fallon. Now, given how much I really hate this series, I'm nervous about this, but I bought this one in hardcover on Pango. Got it for like five bucks and replaced the paperback. So I'm committed to at least trying more from her. And you know, it's funny as I read her medallion, like her Hyruthian Chronicles, and really loved it. Like, did I just... Is it the same level of obnoxious drama, or did I just forget, or did I not care back then? Did that stuff not bother me? I was a teen when I read it, so 
Um, Chris Longknife Mutineer, I am just getting rid of this paperback copy that I think I've let go before, but then I let a friend borrow it, and now she gave it back. I need to relist it on Pango. I may have shown these before, but I've been lazy about listing them. I have a couple of paperbacks that were my grandma's for, um, yeah, some mysteries and stuff. Susan Winning Albert was her favorite mystery writer. And then I've read at least one or two of these, the Cat Who books, but I don't want any of the paperbacks. So I need to actually get those off my shelf and list them. And that's it. Oh, no, wait. I have Mirage by Julie Ternita and Spectrum by Julie Ternita because when I was ordering on Book Outlet, I thought I hadn't bought these yet. And then I get them home and I move a figurine aside on my shelf to shelve them and see that I already own both copies. But see, the thing is, is like I was thinking this one's yellow and this one's red, so should be yellow and red on the spine which they kind of are, but I saw the blue blob and I'm like, oh, that's not the right thing. Yeah, whatever. Mistakes were made. Hopefully someone is as excited about Julie Ternita as I am because she's one of my all-time favorite sci-fi writers. And that pretty much sums it up on what I'm letting go. This combined with the last stacks that I let go. They fell over. I didn't do that on purpose. But this is pretty much everything I'm letting go. Quite a big stack this time. This is in combination with the first half of the video that I filmed, so this is just today's stuff. And it'll be nice to clear out some space and get these books listed on Pango. Which, by the way, I'll put a link to in the description if you're interested in supporting the channel by buying a book. That would be really cool. But yeah, we're looking good. And my favorite part is that my unhaul shelf is totally empty. It'll be satisfying to start filling that back up again. Hey, I'm interrupting wherever I was at in the video to add a couple of more unhauls, and these are kind of big ones. So I have these massive Harry Potter collector's edition for every house that are my husband's that we've decided we're going to let go. And they are pretty freaking cool. Each of them have sprayed edges, and they have specific historical information about each of the houses depending on which set you have. So if you have the Hufflepuff set, you learn more about the House of Hufflepuff. And there's a couple of cool Easter eggs in it. There are trivia questions at the end and original artwork throughout. They are so cool. We bought them because we are mega fans, but space. I mean, we've got so many things that I want to make room for, and these are taking up quite a bit of shelf space. So we've decided to make the economical decision and let them go. Here they are in all their glory. This has to be like the coolest thing that I've ever unhauled from the collection. Ta-da! Back to other me. Thank you for watching with me, and I hope to catch you on the next one. Bye.